What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. I'm just gonna jump straight into this topic because it's one that I'm very, very passionate about. So first of all, I wanna say this. We are officially in a recession. And when I made my last video about the recession a month or two ago, everyone was giving me a hard time saying, well, now we, we've been in a recession and blah, blah, blah. Look, we're officially in a recession now. I get that we've been in one, but a lot of people really don't know that. So anyway, I'm gonna jump straight into this topic. Uh, and it does relate to recessions and any type of downturn or any type of financial hardship you can think of. How to have peace of mind when it comes to your finances. That is the topic for today. So check this out. During recessions, people freak out. When overtime at work gets cut, people freak out. When job layoffs happen, when furloughs happen, basically when the year 2020 happened, people freak out. So this video serves as a proactive approach instead of a reactive approach to anything bad that can happen. We do not have to wait for these times to happen. As long as we're proactive, we'll be good. Now, obviously we can't predict things like pandemics. I don't know, not one person who predicted the pandemic. We can't always foresee a layoff happening at work or furloughs to happen. We can't always predict certain businesses going under, which then affect other businesses. We can't affect sicknesses, hardships, and things of that nature. We can't always predict them. So that's why you put yourself in a position to be prepared for anything in the first place. I wrote about this quite a bit in my book and it's probably one of the longest chapters I have in my entire book, but it's basically just an endless cycle of comfort where before the bad things happen, we're comfortable. We're chilling at the house, we're watching Netflix, you know what I'm saying, music is playing, whatever the case is. You might have a few drinks, you might have some company over. You might just find yourself like living a life full of comfort and for years and years and years, coming back home, watching The Office, going back to work, looking forward to the weekend, only to just continue to repeat the cycle over and over and over again, the cycle of comfort. Being at work, praying to God that five o'clock just rolls around so now you can go back home and chill. Praying to God that the weekend just hurries up and rolls around so you can go back and chill, go back into your comfort zone. But I want you to ask yourself a question right now. If you were to miss your next paycheck, for whatever reason, the company makes a mistake or there's a legit reason like, hey, we're going out of business. Like whatever the case is, if you missed your next paycheck, what type of financial situation would you be in? Most people would freak out and most people would not know what to do. They wouldn't even know the first step of what to do. And even more people don't currently have the finances in place to actually cushion that fall. Reminds me a lot of 2020. See, when things happen like the year of 2020, there is no more comfort because that came out of nowhere. The whole world basically shut down out of nowhere. 2021 was a pretty good year, right? But to me, that was just like a facade. Like there was a lot of quantitative easing going on in 2021, which means the government's just basically pumping a bunch of money back into the economy. So that way it seems like everything's all good. That's why the stock market was doing so good in 2021. That's why to an extent things seem pretty peachy in 2021, like everything was all good, but it's not all good. It's showing, it's showing itself right now. There's gonna come a time when things fall and that time is right now. I ain't trying to scare nobody, I'm just telling you. When these things happen, you've gotta be prepared anyway. I've been preparing for things like this since 2017 when I first got out on my own. I didn't even conceive of such ideas as a pandemic or another recession to happen. Wasn't even thinking about all those things. I just knew I need to have my finances in place. If something happens, I'm going to be good. That's what you always want to be able to say. But how do you get there? How do you get that financial peace? In my mind, what that starts with is a good savings and a good savings plan, automating your savings and having it happen every single month without you even thinking about it. And I would recommend that it happens at the very beginning of the month. Go watch my video about how to master budget and saving money because I promise you that will be a 100% value add if you don't already do this. But I would make sure it happens at the very beginning of the month before your money has a chance to go anywhere else because you have to pay yourself first and sustain yourself first. You know how when you're on the airplane they say you need to secure your mask? Hey. Make sure you secure your mask first before helping somebody else. It's exactly like that. That's how this game of life goes. Because if you pay everything else first, I promise you, you are not going to have as much left for yourself in the end. And, and a lot of those things that you spend money on besides like your necessities and your bills and things, a lot of those things that you spend your money on besides yourself, right, are going to be miscellaneous things, things that you don't need. Whereas if you pay yourself first and then you pay all your bills and your necessities, then whatever you have left over, then that can go towards those miscellaneous things. 
But I would rather have less money to go towards miscellaneous things and things that I don't need than what I'm actually paying myself. Because what I'm paying myself is ultimately going toward my future. I'm not going to starve my future self just for my current self to be happy. Not doing it. I think that was quote worthy. I think somebody should type that in the comments. But anyway, and this method right here should be done all the time. All the time. Despite how good and shiny things are and how many butterflies and rainbows are in the sky, this should be happening preemptively no matter what. And you gotta think, it's gonna be automated, so you set it up one time and then you're done. And the only time you should set it up again is if you're increasing the money that's going into it. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's really not even that hard. It really doesn't even require any discipline. It's straight up just doing one thing one time that takes you less than five minutes, by the way. And then once it's done, it's done, and your, mo your money is getting automated. Boom, boom, boom. You don't even think about it. Then one day you look into your bank account, you have multiple thousands of dollars. Just knowing that you have your bank account automated alone will help you sleep well at night. You got to have some cash reserves. You got to. You got to build it up. And you don't stop at just, you know, a thousand, two thousand. Keep stacking it up. Let it get to a point where it matches what you're getting paid at work. So the paychecks that you're taking home, make sure that money matches your paychecks. Okay, now I have one, two, three, four, four paychecks worth of money in my savings account. Just based on me letting my bank account automate itself. And based on me increasing that amount once I feel more comfortable and once I make more money. That's how it should go. You know, got me getting fired up today. Another way to have a peace of mind financially is to constantly educate yourself about finances. Even though I'm over here influencing and educating you guys on this channel about anything personal finance, every single day, there's not a day that passes where I'm not educating myself about money because I know I don't know everything. And I know the more that I know, the more knowledge I'm going to have and I'm going to be able to apply to my life and help other people add to their lives. There's always a method or a trick or a hack that you can do to improve your lives. There's always a book. There's always a person that has information or at least a perspective or outlook on life that is different from yours that you're actually going to look at and be like, wow, I never thought of it that way. That's actually a way better way than I was looking at it. That's what I want. That's what I look for every day. That's what I want to find when I'm educating myself on personal finance. And a lot of times you're going to read a lot of things that are repetitive, things that you feel like you already know or things that you probably already done mastered by now because you've read so many financial books. But the idea is you read the correct thing over and over and over again. You never. How, how often do you think you're going to doubt yourself when you're like, oh, well, yeah, I read this about 10 times by now. You know what I'm saying? I done read, went through all these books and read the same thing 10 different times. You really think you're going to second guess yourself with how you save your money or how you manage your money or what your plan is on getting out of debt. If you see people who are smarter and richer than you do the same things with the same exact methods. They might even add something to a method that you've been doing that you can then add on to how you're doing it and get out of debt faster or save money faster or invest in better investments. You get what I'm saying? I just think it's about time we spent more time educating and studying and learning and having epiphanies and learning from our mistakes than just complaining about the situation. You and I can't control the fact that there's a recession going on right now. We can't control what happened back in 2020. We can't control what companies decide to close down for a few weeks or a few months or even go out of business. We can't control that, but what can we control? We can control our financial education and we can control what we do with our money. And that's why I always said, I said this a few videos back, but you've gotta be a good steward of the money that you have. Think about it, like the money that you have, if you cherish it, once you get it and you do the right things with it, once you get it, only good things are going to happen. It's just like in relationships and I'm talking like your significant other friendships, your family members, you have to cherish those relationships. You have to cherish those people while they're here because they're not going to be here forever. Just like your next paycheck is going to be here for a time, but the amount of money that's in it is not going to last forever. It is just not. But if you do the right things with it, if you put it in a savings account or if you put it in an investment that's going to make it grow 10% year over year, you're prolonging the life of that money. You're cherishing that money. You're doing the right things with that money. And therefore, you're being a good steward of that money. So if you're out here being reckless with your money and spending it on, spending it on things either you can't afford or just spending it so loosely that you run out of it, 
you're not being a good steward of that money and there is absolutely no peace that comes with it. You might have nice things. You might be able to show off at a party or you might be able to show off to whatever company you have coming over. But I'm telling you right now, you're not going to be able to sleep at night like someone who has their finances together sleeps at night. I promise you that. That's why I made that whole video, how to be financially stable. That's why I made that follow up video of to anyone who is feeling financially unstable. Because the thing about financial stability is you have to be stable within yourself and within your mindset and within your decisions with your money. I'm going off today now. I'm going to let y'all know something. And here's another thing. Credit card debt. You want to feel financially unstable? You want to feel like, you know what I'm saying? You don't got no peace in your life? Get into, uh, get into credit card debt. Go on ahead. Get, in, get into a crazy amount of credit card debt that you know for a fact you can't pay off anytime soon that has a 17% or more interest rate. See, there's different types of debt. And I, this is something else I break down in my book in depth. I'm just giving y'all a little taste right now, but go buy my book when it comes out. It comes out August 14th. But anyway, there's stuff like mortgage, there's stuff like student loans, and there's stuff like credit card debt. Credit card debt greatly outweighs both of those. As a matter of fact, even though the housing market is kind of crazy right now, if you were to combine the interest rates of housing and student loans, it would still be less than your average credit card interest rate. And so that's another thing. Don't get yourself in such a bad position with your credit card to where you owe so much money and that interest rate is eating you alive because there's going to become a point in time where it's extremely hard, if not impossible, for you to get out of that. Because if you're like most people in this world, you didn't look at the cost of living and I didn't either. I didn't either at first. That's how I know this mistake happens over and over and over again. But you might not have looked at the cost of living. So you might be living in an apartment or a house that's more expensive than what you should be paying for. And therefore, you're not able to save as much money. If you're not able to save as much money, how in the world do you think you're going to get out of debt? Especially credit card debt. I mean, I'll, I mean, break it down. Do the math. If you have a 17% interest rate, right, and you owe $100, but you're only paying the minimum payment because you can't afford to pay the $100, you're really paying more in interest than you're paying on the actual chunk of money that you owed in the first place. So you might spend $25, but you're probably going to have like a little over $12 that you actually knocked off of the initial payment that you owe. But because that interest rate went up, boom, now you still owe like $87. That's a very, very rough estimate. I don't have a calculator in front of me. I'm doing this all in my head. But what my point is, is that you're spending more money in interest than you did to actually knock off what you had left to pay. And so now imagine if that $100 is now $1,000, $10,000, and you do that same minimum payment mess, I'm telling you right now, that interest rate is going to eat you alive. So I say that to say this, don't put yourself in a position to get into crazy credit card debt. Educate yourselves about credit cards. Credit cards are lovely things. They're amazing. They, you can actually make money off them and get points if you use them correctly. But if you're a beginner or if you just don't know anything about credit cards in general, don't do that. Don't put yourself in a position where you're going to pay money that you can't afford to pay back just because you want to get something right now. Now, I get some people in their financial situations, they are in a situation where they have to use credit cards to pay their bills. I ain't talking about that crowd right now. I'm talking about someone who deliberately swipes, 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 doesn't really think that much about it. They're not in a bad financial situation. They just swipe, swipe, swipe. They don't want to wait till their next paycheck, so they just keep swiping Balenciagas, swiping new TV, swiping a new couch, a new bedroom set. You get what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to do all of that. See, our impatience a lot of time is what gets us in a situation. If you're impatient, if you're indecisive, if you're unstable with your financial decisions, it is going to reflect in your finances, in your bank account. It's probably going to reflect in your dreams, too. You're probably going to be having nightmares about this stuff now. But it's the truth, though. It all starts with you and your mindset. And lastly, once you get things going, once you have that financial reserve, once you have, you know, no credit card debt, once you have, like, really, really good things going for you, it helps you sleep even better at night when you know I have money working for me in my sleep. I would always say invest in the stock market. And right now is a pretty darn good time being that the stock market has been down just about all year. Like if you put money into it, 
once it goes up, it's going to multiply your money more than it would if you than if you invested when you know it was doing a lot better because the ups are going to be a lot lower and the downs are going to be a lot lower. But once the downs get as low as they are right now, and you put your money into it, once it goes back up, it's going to brrr, multiply your money. But yeah, that's what I would say. That's how you keep a peace of mind financially. First of all, you have to find peace within yourself, though. Like. It's very hard temperamentally to do anything in a peaceful way and to have a peaceful thought process about anything if you're not at peace with yourself. If you have a bunch of chaos going on in your brain, it's going to be very difficult for you to sit there and make logical financial decisions. I'm just saying that right now. But yeah, set the automation, take the discipline out of it. If you feel like you're not disciplined enough to do it, take the discipline out of it and automate it. You'll be able to save a lot more. Watch my video about how to budget and save money or how to master budgeting and saving money. I'm telling you right now, you will be on top of the world after you watch that video. I'm just saying, make sure you're always educating yourself. And if not just finances, educate yourself on something you're struggling with in addition to personal finances, because it's going to make you better as a person. I want y'all to think in that way. I've got to always better myself no matter what is going on through the hardships, through the ups, through the downs. I always need to improve, always, always, always. And make sure you don't get yourself in a position to get into credit card debt. And if you do, use the avalanche method and knock that debt off your radar so you can sleep at night. And that's really all I have for you. Just, just do those things. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, it's definitely easier said than done, but this is how you earn that peace of mind. Anyway, leave comments down below about what you think about the recession that's official now. And also leave a comment down below if you thought this video was helpful. Anyway, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.